Hey guys, it's Bang from About PC Gamer here. I'm about to take a look at the Sapphire Nitro RX 480 Plus Overclock Edition. Now this is the 8 gigabyte variant and it is definitely an aftermarket version of the RX 480 and one of the best ones on the market in my opinion. Um, so Sapphire has gone with this kind of sentinel looking mech design for the artwork of the box. Really, really nice actually. I think it's pretty good, better than some of the boxes I've opened which are pretty bland. Now just to have a quick look at the rear, um, it does recommend that you use a 500 watt power supply and at the back it just gives you a, a rundown of some of the features OpenGL 4.5, Vulkan API, AMD Crossfire and it gives you another look of the card so nothing too much at the back of the box. Time to show you what's inside. As you can see the card is really well packaged with a nice amount of protective foam to stop any damage that you may incur in transit. You get a driver CD and a Sapphire membership uh, club coupon which is gold. Um, the codes inside which obviously I'm not going to reveal. The card itself is in a protective anti-static bag underneath. So here she is, the card itself and it is quite the beauty. Very very easy on the eye, I love the design myself. Pure black with bits of silver accents all over it. It does come with a backplate as well which I'll show you in a moment. comes with a Sapphire RGB logo at the top which you can change via a switch and software which is located at the back of the card but again a very very good looking card and I do love the design. Here's a look at the backplate of the card. I think most cards should come with a backplate. No one likes a rear naked PCB and it just adds that kind of premium finish to your graphics card. This is the LED switch I was talking about. This cycles through a few different modes of the RGB lighting scheme. Taking a look at the rear of the card now as you can see this card comes with a single 8 pin PCI Express power connector so no chance of your card drawing too much power from your motherboard's PCI Express socket. Last but not least this is the rear IO connections on the card so you get two HDMI and two display port and one DVI connection which is a welcome sight for some people I can imagine as it was missing on the reference RX 480 designs. So that about wraps up the unboxing. You've seen the card. You've seen the box. So now it's time to get it into this Skylake build and hopefully it won't disappoint. So I've got the card installed now and it's looking right at home in this black and red theme build. And that's the beauty of having a um, black and white color scheme card. So having a look at the RGB feature of the card, it's cycling through all the colors at the moment. So there's something there for everyone. There's green, red, blue, orange, purple, turquoise, whatever you want. You can customize this with um, additional software from Sapphire as well. Okay, guys, you've seen the card. Now it's time to get down to business. I'm going to put this card through a few games so you guys can see the performance but before that I'll show you some specs so I'm using the card at stock at the moment it comes at 1342 megahertz on the core clock and 2000 megahertz on memory which translates to 8 gigahertz of memory speed as it is quad pumped because of GDDR5 16.91 drivers which are the latest of today's date I'm using Intel Core i7-6700K and this is at 4.6 gigahertz Memory wise 16 gigabytes of G skill Trident Z which is running at 3200 megahertz and all of this is running on the Asus Maximus 8 formula. So quite a high end build, no reason for the RX 480 to be held back in any way. So what I want to do is put it through 5 games and uh, basically give you a live look at how the games perform. But for those of you who like overclocking, I also tried that out as well. So what I did was first increased the power limit to 50. Uh, made sure that the temperature limit was at maximum, which is 90. And I increased the voltage by 24. For the core clock, I only pushed it to 1430 megahertz. Um, didn't want to push it too far. And the memory, I added 150 megahertz on top. So what I'm going to be doing is running the card at stock and overclock so you guys can see both set of results. 
And with the overclock, I also added a custom van profile with a maximum of 75%. Okay, time to get into it. So that was a look at Crisis 3. At 1080p, the RX 480 with stock clocks averaged 71.1 frames per second and a minimum frames per second of 58. One overclocked, um, I managed to get an additional 4 frames per second which pushed it up to 75.4 frames and 59 on the minimum. At 1440p, at stock clocks averaged 44.13 frames per second and a minimum of 39. With the overclock in place, this bumped all the way up to 48 frames per second with a minimum of 40. So, performs very, very well at uh, 1080p and is definitely playable at uh, 1440p. But again, we all know Crisis is pretty demanding. Moving on to the very popular Grand Theft Auto 5, the AMD RX 480 at 1080p with stock clocks averaged 71.8 frames per second and a minimum of 46 frames, while overclocked it averaged 77 frames per second, so an increase of 7 frames per second and a minimum of 50, so a small increase in the minimum as well. At 1440p at stock clocks, it averaged 55 frames per second with a minimum of 37. With the overclocking place, this bumped up to 58 frames per second on average with a minimum of 37. So no increase in the minimums, but an increase of 3 frames per second on the average. So not too bad in Grand Theft Auto 5. Well, I'm sure you don't need me to tell you that this is very, very good performance on The Witcher 3, which is a very demanding game. The RX 480 at stock clocks at 1080p averaging 76.4 frames per second and a minimum of 58. With the overclock in place, we gained an additional 6 frames per second. We've pushed it up to 82.7 frames per second on average and 74 on the minimum, which increased quite a lot. Now, at 1440p at stock clocks, we averaged 54.7 frames per second 
with a minimum of 50 frames. With the overclock in place, that bumped all the way up to 59 frames per second on average, with a minimum of 53, so great stuff in The Witcher 3. So, Rise of the Tomb Raider, at 1080p at stock clocks, the RX 480 averaged 70.59 frames per second, with a strangely low minimum of 14.65, which was very consistent after many runs. Um, at 1440p, averaged 49.85 frames per second, with a minimum of 13.59. Um, testing the game in DirectX 12 mode, I, at 1080p, at stock settings, I averaged 71.56 with a minimum of 39.73 so the minimums um, increased the way you would expect in DirectX 12 um, with 1440p averaged 49.76 with a minimum of 34.21 so again the minimums back to where you would expect with the overclocking place in DirectX 12 mode 1080p averaged 76.75 frames per second so a 6 frames per second increase with a minimum of 54 frames per second at 1440p, 53.76 frames per second on average, with a minimum of 36.31 frames. So, very, very good performance at 1080p. Um, just um, a bit under 60 frames at 1440p, so very playable and very good performance. So looking at the last game now, Deus Ex Mankind Divided, at 1080p at stock clocks, the RX 480 averaged 53.9 frames per second with a minimum of 27.5. Um, in DirectX 12, this was 53.3 frames per second and a minimum of 23, so an actual reduction in performance for some strange reason. At 1440p, an average of 37 frames per second and a minimum of 29.4. In DirectX 12 mode, um, an average of 37.8 frames per second and a minimum of 30, so a 0.8 frames per second increase. With the overclocking place in DirectX 12 mode, I averaged at 1080p 58.2 frames per second and a minimum of 46.1. Decent increase in performance, um, so about 5 frames per second. Um, for 1440p, I had an average of 40 frames per second and a minimum of 32 so an increase of 3 frames per second not too much at um, 1440p which seems to be a trend the higher the resolution the, the less you gain from overclock so um, for a card of this price I really can't complain about the performance it does excellent at 1080p at ultra settings so it pretty much does everything you'd want it to at 1080p. At 1440p you do have to kind of um, manage your expectations a bit, you can't just go ultra on every game and expect to get 60 frames per second but it is um, a genuine 1440p playable card, you just need to kind of tweak the settings a bit. So talking about temperatures now, um, at stock with no overclock and no fan profile, um, fans max out at 60% and temperatures tend to never go above 75% celsius but um with the overclock in place um you do need to kind of increase that fan profile to about at least 70 to 75 just to keep things in check 
Um, it's not the quietest card, I do have to admit. Um, when things go above 50%, it does become pretty audible. Um, so 60% cap at default is kind of a good thing. So it will keep temperatures in check and um, it won't be too distracting when you game. But I'm, I have to say, I'm very, very happy with the card itself. Um, looks great. Under load, as you can see, it kind of pulses red. And when it's not on load, it just um, cycles through colors unless you've uh, put a different profile for the color scheme yourself. So very happy with the Sapphire Nitro Plus RX 480 Overclock 8GB Edition. And I'm very happy to show you the results. Anyway guys, that's pretty much it for me. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video and as always, thanks for watching.